Let's hear it for our children. Promise Kids is released at this time. Parents, please go sign in your children to our Dream Team members so they can get started on all the wonderful activities that are planned for them today. In the meantime, we'll go over a few announcements while uh, they're all getting themselves together and the parents are getting themselves back. Uh, for those of you who do not know, services are here every Sunday morning, 1030, and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. We also broadcast live and online, uh, so you can watch us online, or you can pick up your free DVDs or CDs of the services out in the foyer, and please take them. They're free. Pass them out as you will. We've got a couple other announcements on the screen real quick we'll go over. Let's start at the first one there, if you would, Shane. Uh, oh, yes, we're doing a new Wednesday night series on worship training. If you ever wonder what it, what it means to worship and how to worship God, you know, join us on Wednesday nights. We are looking at the attributes of this wonderful, wonderful God that we worship. Kathy Susa Meyer's funeral will be at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. Those of you who know Miss Kathy is at Cully's Funeral Home at Riggins Road. The viewing is at 5. Uh, if you need any more details, please see me after her service, and I'll get with you on that. We need to keep the Garrett family as well as Miss Kathy's family in our prayers at this point in time. Uh, Dream Team, please be here 45 minutes early before service starts so we can get our positions and everything in order so we can greet our guests with a wonderful, wonderful smiles. We love our guests, don't we? Men's Prayer Breakfast, first Saturday every month. Men, if you're not doing anything and you want to come have some good food, some good fellowship, and some good prayer time, join us the first Saturday every month right here at this sanctuary at 7 a.m., also, we have women's intercessory prayer group that meets every Monday night at 7 p.m., except for the first Monday. The first Monday of the month is the women's food and fellowship. So join them first Monday of every month uh, for food and fellowship here at Promised Land for our ladies. Sewing Circle meets Tuesdays from 10 to 1. Bring a bag lunch. Uh, if you need any alterations, see Miss Susan. She'll be glad to get with you. They will do alterations. I brought in a pair of jeans, and I'm told that they are hemmed and ready to go, so I'm so excited about that. So our sewing circle does meet here on Tuesdays, every Tuesday at 10. Christmas night service. Maybe you're in the area and you don't have any family lo locally, and you want something to do on Christmas Day. Christmas Day night on the 25th, December 25th at 6 p.m., we'll be gathering right here for a white elephant gift exchange, as well as uh, food and fellowship, and it'll be a lot of fun, uh, huge success. We have had lots and lots of people attend this in the past, and the more people that attend, the more fun that it is, so it's a really wonderful time. Join us at 6 p.m. on Christmas night. Uh, what else we got up there for announcements? Um, there is generally additional parking in the back, where there's an issue right now, so it's kind of roped off, but we'll be glad to assist you with additional parking. Uh, what else do we have? Is that it? Okay. Let's see here. Oh, we have water baptisms coming up next Sunday. Next Sunday, you'll notice in your bulletin there's a, a uh, slip of paper there. We will be meeting at Mitch and Carol's house, which is 64 Emerald Acres, at 4 p.m. on December 21st for water baptism. So if you've never been baptized and never got your baptism order, join us. We'll be doing baptisms at 4 o'clock December 21st at Mitch and Carol's house. And let's see, do I have anything else? I think that just about covers all of our current events and our bulletins. Am I missing anything, Michelle? Have we covered everything? Okay, we have a sign-up sheet for what? Oh, for the baptism, yes. Uh, sign-up sheet for the water baptism uh, on the front desk. Just see um, Michelle, and she'll help you out with that. Uh, let's see here. We had uh, something else we needed to do, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, I remember what it was. It's called worship. Yeah. Are y'all ready to do some worship? Are you ready to worship our Lord? Yeah. We're going to do some worship. <laughs> Father, we just welcome your power and your presence here, right here today, Lord. Oh, we need you. We need you, Lord. And, and today, as we, as we come into a time of just honoring you and worshiping you because you're worthy, Lord, we are so mindful of our friend, Miss <laughs> Jean. Oh, she is worshiping you like nobody else is worshiping you right now. She is at your feet, and she is so, so happy. 
So, Father, I just pray that you would just begin to minister not only to the family that's here, the friends, but all of us, Lord God, as we seek you today. Let your presence be here. Let us surrender what needs to be surrendered. Let us bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand and worship together.
Amen. Amen. You may be seated just for a moment. Listen, um, just a couple things real quick. This is Dylan. Dylan, go ahead and stand up on that stool. Okay. Dylan is uh, one of ours, and Miss Jean loved our kids. She loved our kids so much. And so in honor of Miss Jean, Dylan is making his debut. He's never played the keyboard, never played the piano in this church in a public setting ever before or saying this is his first time and he's doing it in honor of Miss Jean because of how much she loved him. So Dylan, whenever you're ready, go ahead. I think he's a little nervous. You got it. You want mommy to sing with you? Okay. It's working, yes. Oh, my goodness. He Nobody can see you now, Dylan. Go ahead. You're all by yourself. Both C, right? This is both C's and A. Okay, so go back. Okay, it's okay, Dylan. That's the way I felt too. First sermon I preached, I'll never forget it. I had this like 45 minute message prepared. I did. And there was this microphone right in front of me, and the thing got bigger and bigger and bigger as I was sitting there. I was done in 10 minutes. Unfortunately, that's not happening for y'all today, okay? Uh, it has been much longer than 10 minutes, okay, because I'm not scared of the microphone anymore. Dylan, it's okay. You don't need to if you don't want to. We can try again another time. Okay. Come on. We'll go back to kids' class. Yeah. Y'all give them a hand. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Hey, uh, listen, uh, visitors, uh, guests, if you have one of those visitor cards, guest cards, please fill it out and either drop it in the uh, tithe box in the back or give it to uh, one of the Dream Team members when you exit as well. We really would like a chance to get in touch with you. Uh, members, uh, guests, you already know this, don't feel obligated to put anything in those tithing boxes. Those are for members only. They're just right back there by the back door. Uh, you know, do not feel obligated. We just want a chance just to... Uh, be a part of you today. So thank you so much. Let's all stand and worship again. Not yet. Not yet. No. Just, not yet? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm talking about uh, Miss Jean. That um, I just really want to share a little bit. That um, she's really special for me. She is. You know, I you know, I couldn't wait on Sunday to see her on the door to listen what what happened on her week. And usually we talk about the gardening and riding the bike because for some, you know, we like to ride the bike. And she is really a mother figure for me that I don't have in here. And talking about mother, I just want to praise the Lord. I really want to praise the Lord. And I really want to share to everybody how faithful God is. My mother had a, had a surgery last week and I just found out on Friday, because for some reason the phone connection didn't let them call me at all. So she had a condition on her foot and having a surgery over there in my country is pretty expensive. And so, but with the new president that they have, they starting the new program for the health for everybody over there. And my mom, 
my mother had uh, all the tests, the blood tests, the surgery, the first class in the hospital, and everything that she needed. And whenever she got out of the hospital, it cost her zero. Ooh. Cost her zero. And God, <laughs> and I'm really, really a little bit. Because uh, she's really pressure for me. She's really precious. Yes, same thing with Miss Jean. She's really precious for me. And, and we share a lot, a lot every Sunday. And sometimes we saw each other at the park. And we saw each other at the Walmart and talk about what we like to do. And she just really remind me of my mother. And I praise God that God took care of her foot. And she got up the surgery well and especially didn't cost her anything and I was like thank you Jesus thank you because I really want to bless her as much as I could but distance just make it not possible and but I know one person that can take care of my mother is God and um is doing it right now. So I just want to share that because there's a really press report that I got last week from my parents. And um, God is faithful. God is faithful. And as long as we serve him, he's taking care of all his children, even whenever we don't think about it. So, and thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Praise Jesus. You may be seated at this time. We're taking a little bit of a break today from our series on apologetics, and we are honoring and celebrating the life of Miss Jean Hayes. I promise you, if you knew Miss Hayes, you knew what a smile she could put on your face just by walking in the door. She was beautiful. She loved people. She loved me. She did. I don't know why, but she did. Didn't she, Matt? Yeah. I will, I'll never forget. It was about four months ago. She said, Glenn, you think you're a wife of mine if I could be your second wife? And I was like, Miss Jean, I'm not quite sure how to take that, but I'm sure she wouldn't mind too much. <laughs> so, love, Miss Jean. So today we gather not only to celebrate our Savior and to worship him, and to hear his word. And today I'm going to be taking you to Miss Jean's favorite passage of scripture. Is what I'm actually going to preach on today. But we also join with the Hayes family to celebrate the life of our good friend, Miss Jean. Miss Beverly Jean Hayes was born July 25th, 1931. This past Thanksgiving day, November 27th, Miss Jean's joined hands with her husband and best friend of 63 years, Larry Hayes. They're both in heaven with Jesus right now. No more, hurt, no more hurting, no more sickness, no more pain, no more sorrow. Dancing on streets of gold. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. She's survived by her children, Matthew Hayes, Mark Hayes, and Vicki Kurtz, along with three grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, and her most loyal and trusted four-legged friend, Fritz. <laughs> so anybody here had the pleasure of meeting Fritz? Yeah, there he goes. A bunch of hands went up. Fritz, her loyal and trusted friend. As I said before, she celebrated 63 years of marriage before her husband, Larry, went to be with Jesus. She lived an amazing life. Her smile was contagious. As I said before, she could light up the room just by being there. If you ever met her, you knew this to be true. She never met a stranger. The minute you came to know who she was, you were her friend. And she loved you and cared about you. Matt tells me that uh, when he was growing up, all the neighborhood kids would come over to the house and hang out in the garage and get all the sweet tea she could make. She was famous for her sweet tea. You know, she made friends. She gave and gave and gave of herself to this community, to everybody that she met, day in and day out. She knew how to love people. As I've said before, she loved me. If you were her friend, if she met you, she loved you. Wonderful, wonderful example. I have a letter here uh, from the family I'd like to read to you. It's entitled, Mom. It says, it's despairing that it takes a loved one to die before reflecting on that loved one's gift to those around us. How true is that? How despairing it, that it is for a loved one to die before we take the time to reflect on that loved one's gift to those around us. Vicki says, I I'm for sure knew that my mom was loved and offered much to her family, friends, and community. I assumed that there would always be tomorrow to let her hear how much I appreciated all that she did in her 83 years. We never know 
when our last breath will be. And her last breath came quicker than my words. I can only say I have a new appreciation for living in the present. Being kinder and showing gratitude every day. So, mom is still continuing to bestow her gifts upon me and the family. Mom had a knack for being subtle with her gifts. You heard from someone else what she was doing. She didn't boast, did she? She wasn't like, look at me, look what I'm doing. She just gave and gave and gave of herself. She was content with living a simple life that embodied her family, close friends, her home and yard, and community. She always said charity begins right here. She walked neighbor's dogs, helped with their children, took donations to the dog pound and the women's shelter. Mom volunteered at the Promised Land thrift store and was always willing to help those around her. When mom drove the school bus for disadvantaged students, the kid always, kids always received a gift for their birthday, Christmas, and for some, something for summer. She got to know them, their parents, and many of their teachers. For mom, driving that bus was secondary to the students and their needs. And that scenario sums up how she felt towards others, caring and interested in how you were. Mom loved working in her yard, sitting on her porch and taking care of her fritz. She loved walking in the park, going to the beach, and cooking good dinners. Mom loved being at home and spending time with her kids and her grandchildren. Mark, Matt, and myself fill a void that will be difficult to fill. I realize that time heals, and I know it does. I know that she did not suffer and that she had a good, healthy, and happy life. I know that she would want not, not want any of us wallowing in misery, worrying about how we're all to move forward without her. She taught us to move on, to be strong, and to live our lives fully. It may not be tomorrow or the next day before that happens, but mom, moms do know what's best. Yeah. Miss Jean, we love you. We appreciate everything that you've done for this community, for all of us in the 83 years that you were here. You will be greatly missed. And in honor of her today, I want to preach from her favorite passage of Scripture, Psalm 23. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me there. Psalm 23, we're, we're going to read all six verses, and my PowerPoint guy is going to have to just kind of keep up with me, then go backwards, but I think he can manage. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here, to celebrate who you are and who you are in us, to look to you for our strength and in this time of loss, Lord, and in this time of hurting, Lord. And, Father, we do ask that you just minister to the, to the family and to the friends that are here that are, that, that are missing Miss Jean so much, that you'll minister to them as they hear what Miss Jean knew about your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Going back to verse 1, uh, David wrote this psalm, for those who do not know. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is really kind of important that you understand that David, David was a shepherd before he was king. So he knew what it meant to be a shepherd. He knew how to be out there in the fields and watching the flock. And, and when the, in fact, we know that it, scripture tells us that he defended the flock against the bear and against the lion. And, and I could see this, 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 this young child, maybe teenager age or younger, out there watching the fields and, and a bear coming up. And I don't know. Poor little Dylan didn't even make it on the piano. I don't know what he'd do if a bear showed up today. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, here he is, and a bear shows up, but yet here he knows. He knows what he's able to do with his God. And with his God, he's able to go after the bear and save the flock from the bear. He's able to, to go after the lion and defeat the lion and save the flock from the lion. And so as he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David knows what it means to be a shepherd. And I almost think that as he's writing this scripture and he's reflecting back and he's writing this song and, and, he, and he's thinking back about the times that he spent in the field watching the flock and, and, and knowing who his God is, he's almost boasting. Because there's something that David understood. Under the care of a good shepherd, the flock will flourish. The flock will have all that they need. They won't be lacking in anything. And that's why he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And that's the whole point that he knew who his shepherd was. He knew who his God is. He knew who he was looking to. He knew where his strength came from. And so therefore, knowing that under the hand of a good shepherd, that the flock will flourish and under the hand of a bad shepherd, the flock will be destroyed. He is boasting to all others that can hear him. He's saying, look at me. Look who my shepherd is. Look who my God is. Look who the one is that holds me in his hand. And I firmly believe that that's why this was Miss Jean's favorite passage of Scripture. Because she knew how to say, look who my God is. In the years that I knew her, and that's not as many as many of you in this room, she wasn't one to talk a whole lot about what she believed. Not to me anyways. But she lived it every single day. She lived it in the kindness and the charity that, that she gave. You know, for those of you who attend this church, you hear me say all the time, you've got your walk talk and your talk talk, and your walk talk needs to be louder than your talk talk. That's the first time you've heard that. You'll think about that for a little while. But that's what Miss Jean did. She lived what she believed. David here is he's shouting out, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It reminds me of a scripture in Philippians, Philippians 4.19. We can maybe pull it up there for you. It says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ. Do you understand that? If the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want all your needs will be supplied by the one who cares for you. He cares so much for you that he sent his one and only son to die on Calvary's cross that we could have relationship with him. To cover our sin. Because, buddy, I want to tell you something. I know some of y'all in here. Y'all need some covering. Myself included, amen? If it wasn't for Jesus and his blood shed on Calvary's cross, none of us would have the ability to have a relationship with God because God does not inhabit sin. And we all have fallen short of the glory of God. It's David saying that the, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I have a feeling that he's thinking about the God of Israel, our father. And, and, and he's thinking about the, the one that, that fed Elijah by the, by the brook with the ravens. The, the one that, that, that 
provided for the needs. Do you understand? We have a powerful God. We have a God that sent, that sent his disciples out two by two and, and told them not to take a staff, not to take, a, take anything with them, that he would provide for whatever they needed while they were on their journey. And friends, I want to tell you something. That's the same Lord that we call our shepherd today. You don't know what it is that you think that you need, but if you needed it, God would give it to you. Some of the things that we think we need, we don't need at all because when we get them, we find out it was not exactly what God had in store. Amen? Amen. John 10 and 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Miss Jean would want you to understand the same thing. Your life, my life, all of our lives need to be in the Father's hands. That's how we'll make it through this life. Verse 2 of Psalm 23 says, He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I want you to understand something about sheep. And just in case you're confused, you can look in the mirror after this service and know I'm telling you the truth. Because we're referred to as sheep, aren't we? Sheep are stubborn. Some of you are thinking, how dare him call me stubborn? I'm just telling you, sheep are stubborn animals. They are. And in fact, you know, as we look, it says, he maketh me lie down in green pastures. Did you catch that part? He maketh? Me lie down in green pastures? You know, I mean, sometimes God's got to make us lay down in green pastures. Sometimes he's just got to put us right where we need to be. We're stubborn. And David knew this. And in fact, sheep are so stubborn that unless four things take place, they won't lay down. Those four things are this. They have to be free from fear. If they're not free from fear, if there's any fear in a sheep, he will not lay down. He will not take rest. The second thing is there must be no tension between the members of the flock. If there's any tension, if there's any hierarchy going on, if there's any, you know, I'm better than you, you're better than me type stuff going on, there is no rest for the sheep. Third thing is they must not be aggravated by flies or pests. I can relate to this because come summertime when the yellow flies are out, Man, it is no fun going outside. Could you imagine being a sheep outside in yellow fly season? Man, that's rough, right? No rest. And they also must be free from hunger. See, we have a God that's able. We have a God that's able to make us lay down in green pastures. How does he make us lay down in green pastures? How does he put us there? How does he get us right where we need to be? He takes care of the four issues that it has to happen, that has to take place in order for us to be able to find rest. He removes fear. In fact, 1 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of sound mind. Maybe I've got the wrong passage there, but it's in Timothy. Okay. Friends in Christ, we don't have to worry about tension from our family members. We don't have to worry about tension from our family members in Christ. You see, when we get in Jesus, we're no longer, you know, bucking and arguing and fighting over who's more important. Because when we get in Christ, we understand that the only one that has importance is him. In fact, we're to be bond servants and slaves to Jesus. Scripture says those that find their life lose it. And those that lose their life find it. I know I haven't lived as many years as some of you have, but I lived quite a few years trying to do things my way. I don't know if anybody here can relate. I lived quite a few years try, trying, to, uh, trying to take care of me, trying to give me what I want. Do what I thought was best for me, what was going to bring me pleasure, what was going to make me happy. Anybody ever lived that life? Yeah. One of the things I know by living that life is that in the midst of that life, I was miserable. 
The more I tried to please me, the more I couldn't please me. So the more things I did to try to please me, which only made me more miserable. And the more I tried to find my life, the more I tried to get what I want, the more I tried to do things that I thought would bring me happiness, the more miserable I became. And that passage of scripture, those that find their life, lose it. And those that lose their life, find it, meant so much to me when I finally gave my life to Christ. And I laid down what I want for what he wants for me. And it began to make sense as I lost my life and gave it to Jesus. I found joy. I found love. I found peace. I found patience. I found ability. I found self-control. I found everything I was looking for by losing my life. And friends, when we give our life to Christ, we don't have to worry about the tension with members of the flock. We can be free from that. And he gives us rest. He gives us rest. He's provided relief To you and I, when we surrender our hearts and our lives to him, we are provided relief from the flies and the pestilence and the things of this world. Because the enemy is constantly out there bombarding you, trying to attack you and irritate you and annoy you and get you to walk away from what God wants you to do. But in Christ, we have freedom from all of that. They may still be there, but we're a okay. See, we can rest in him because we're not hungry. We're not hungry. I'm not talking about physical hunger. I'm talking about when you give your life to Christ, he fills that void. That void, that emptiness, he fills it. And you're hungry no more. We can rest in him because we hunger and thirst no more. For he's promised to fill us if we hunger and thirst after his righteousness. The, the, the second part there, it says, he makes me lie down in green, green pastures. He leadeth me beside still water. Did you know sheep won't drink from turbulent water? If you take them to water that's swirling around and it's fast, they won't drink from it. Why is it so important that he lead us beside still waters? Because if we don't get in a point in place where the turbulence of life stops, we'll never be able to find the peace that we need in him. And we have a shepherd that will never leave us, never forsake us. We have a shepherd that cares so much for us that he makes us lie down in green pastures. And he gets us beside still waters where we can find peace. Miss Jean understood that peace, especially in these last few years of her life. Even with all this stuff that was going on, even with losing her husband earlier, she knew peace. An amazing woman to to, to know the life that she's been through and how hard and how tough times were and how she had to stay the course and and do different things. And and then to lose her husband at 63 years and walk in this service every Sunday morning with the biggest smile on her face, no matter what she was going through. That's an amazing woman. That's a woman that is lying down in green pastures. That's a woman that is beside still waters. That's a woman that knows peace. John 7 and 37 states, says, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Our shepherd leads us beside still waters. Verse 3 says, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm going to talk about that restoring of our soul. Many of you here today have experienced life outside of Christ. We just talked about how there's nothing there and how the only peace you can find is by surrendering unto Jesus. See, we have a God. We have a God. We have a God that loves us so much that he's provided for us in every way to restore our souls, the essence of who we are unto him. In fact, he refers to all of us as Christians, as ministers of reconciliation. Why? Because he wants us to be back in his arms. He wants us to be back talking with him, speaking with him, and he with us. He wants to restore our souls. I'm sure David was kind of thinking about sheep as he was thinking about restoring our souls. You know, 
Sheep have a tendency sometimes to, uh, y'all have heard that commercial, Help I've Fallen and Can't Get Up? Yeah, I heard that one, yeah. Yeah, sheep do that. They fall down and they can't get up. And, it, and it's an old English word called cast, and they become cast. And when they become cast, they're upside down on their backs, their legs are in the air, and they cannot roll over. <laughs> Some of y'all look like that right now. <laughs> I mean, we are just cast, okay? We are just up there. We're out there laid up on our backs, feet up in the air, talking about help. I can't get up, okay? We need some help. And that's the reason why David understood this, because as a shepherd, he knew that his job and his duty was to count the flock, and he would be watching over the flock and counting the flock, and as he's counting those little white spots out over the field, he'd look and go, missing one. And he'd look again and count again and, There's a sheep missing. There's something wrong. And maybe he'd walk out and he'd start investigating. And eventually he'd get where he could see the sheep was upside down on its back, his feet up in the air, just to kick in and not able to do anything. And did you know that a sheep will lay there and die if somebody doesn't come along and help it? This is is true stuff. I don't make this stuff up. A sheep would lay there and die in its misery, in its self-pity, unless someone comes by and helps it. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Hey, we have a tendency to lay there in our self-pity and wallow around in our misery and in our sin and in our, our lives against Christ. And we're just laid up there on our backs, not able to do anything until God the Father comes by and rescues us and brings us up out of that pit. And that's the same thing that happened with the sheep. So the shepherd would go out and he would find the sheep and he would put the sheep upright on, on its hind legs, on its legs, and he would begin to rub the legs to get the circulation to go back and to the legs. And then he'd help the sheep, you know, to move his legs back and forth and back and forth to eventually the sheep could kind of stumble off on its own and stay upright. Friends, we have a God that wants to restore us. He wants to restore our soul to a right position. So we're not cast away from him anymore. We're not cast out anymore. But that we're right there with him. Miss Jean knew this. And that's why she had so much joy, even in these last years. That's why she could put a smile on your face, even to her last day. Wonderful, wonderful woman. Second part of chapter, verse 3 says, He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Isaiah 53 and 6 says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to our own way. David understood this. We need somebody to lead us. We need a savior, a shepherd that will not only restore us, but lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So that we can boast and say, look at my shepherd. Look at the one who loves me. Look at the one who's caring for me. Just as David did. I want to tell you, I'm thankful. I'm so thankful that today I have this kind of shepherd. I'm so grateful that today I know what it means to be a child of God. See, left to our own tendencies, we tend to do things our own way. And our own way will lead us astray every day single time. That that scripture right there says, he leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Does it say he drives me to paths of righteousness? That he forces me down paths of righteousness? That he kicks me and pushes me and shoves me down the right road? It says he leads me. Friends, we have a choice We have a choice. We have free will choice. We have a decision that we have to make. And that decision is simply this. Will we follow the one who loves us more than we love ourselves? Or will we do it our own way? Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff Comfort me. Can I tell you something? 
every single one of us are going to go through some things we don't want to go through. Every single one of us in this room will, if you haven't figured it out already, will experience disappointment. We'll experience sadness. We'll experience loss. We will grieve. Every single one of us in this room will hurt from time to time. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. When you've got Jesus Christ as your Savior, when you worship God the Father, when you have a relationship so in tune and so in touch with him that you can say, look at my shepherd, look at the one that I serve, look at the one who's my master, look at the one who's my friend. When you get to that point in place, you don't have to fear the evil. You don't have to fear the disappointment. You don't have to fear the hurt. You don't even have to fear the grief. Because you got one that's going to help you get through it. Amen? Amen. Things aren't always going to go our way. In fact, death is sure to come. We're here today celebrating the life of Miss Jean. Friends, death is certain. You know, they say there's only two certain things in America, death and taxes, right? I've met some people that avoided some of the latter part, but there are no one thing that they can't avoid. Eventually, every single one of us, unless the good Lord comes back first and takes us while we're still here on this earth, will experience death. Every person you love, every person you have a relationship, you look at the person right here, right next to you. I'm looking at the one back there in the back right now. It's going to die one day. It's going to be sad. We're all going to die. Hebrews 9 27 is appointed for men once to die. But after this, the judgment. You know what happens when you die? The judgment. What happens when you die? You know what? The scripture says to be, at, to be absent from the earth is to be present with God. Scripture also tells us that one day every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I want to tell you something. I'm a firm believer that the minute we exit this earth, we meet Jesus. The second we cease to breathe and have existence here, I firmly believe that we are with him. There's a song that we sing called Only Imagine, and I won't break your ears by trying to sing it. Thank you. Appreciate that, (laughs) congregation. All my guests are like, can he not sing? No, I cannot sing. Okay? Okay? In that song, it says, I can only imagine what it will be like on that day when I see my Jesus. You know, will will I stand in your presence or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? You know, I can only imagine. Imagine this. The life you're living, if you checked out, Today, how do you feel you'll be received? If you cease to exist on this earth today, nobody knew Miss Jean was going to go so quickly. I mean, she was a, almost a picture of health just four or five months ago. Nobody expected Miss Kathy to have a heart attack and pass as she's getting dressed for work just this past Thursday, I believe. You know, we don't expect this. Life is short. It's why we need to have things right with him today. Death is certain. We will all walk that same path. One day we will all follow Miss Jean in passing one day. The truth is we can't walk that path with our husband, with our wives, with our friends, with our bosses. And you certainly can't walk it with your pastor. Okay. You're either going to walk that path one or two ways. You're either going to walk it with Jesus or you're going to walk it alone. And friends, I'm telling you, you don't want to walk that path alone. You want to walk it with Jesus. 
Scripture says today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to choose to walk with Jesus. Because you can only choose to be close to the Lord in life in order to be close to him in death. Verse 4 says, uh, that, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, that comfort me. And that rod and that staff, they comfort me. Again, being a shepherd, David's writing this, and he understands fully the, the tools of the trade. You know, a rod was kind of like a, you know, uh, uh, not a staff, but, you know, about like this. You know, almost kind of like a nightclub, you know. Not the kind you go party at on Friday night, but the kind that you, you know, like a baton. Okay, some of y'all catch that later. It's okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, they have this baton, and they would use this baton, and they would use this baton to chase off the bear, to chase off the lion. They would use it as a weapon, but they'd also use it to kind of throw it into the brush, too, and try to get, you know, the, the sheep to go where they need to go. So thy rod and thy staff that comfort me, the staff, you know, that was, that's like the shepherd's hook, you know, like you see, you know, coming up, especially this time of the year, you see the shepherds out there with a the staff, and they'd have a hook, you know, and they'd use that hook to help pull the sheep up out of water, get them out of the briars, whatever they needed to do, they'd use that, that shepherd's hook to care for the sheep. And so it said, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me and I want you to understand those of you who belong to God the authority and the power and the might that he has and the guidance that he gives you are a comfort to you you know sometimes God's discipline is the most comforting thing you can get it keeps you from going too far amen Verse 5 says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Did you know a shepherd would go in and, and inspect a field before he brought the sheep? He'd make sure that the vegetation of that field was good. And as he was making sure the vegetation was good, he'd be lifting up the rocks, moving the rocks, making sure there's no snake viper holes or anything like that or anything that, you know, there may be, you know, something that could harm the sheep there. He would inspect that field and then he'd bring his sheep into it. You see, I want to tell you something. God has prepared a table for you, a fine table, and he has went ahead before you and prepared it. He's come down and prepared the path that you're walking right now to make sure that he can protect you from anything the enemy may throw at you. He has not left you alone. And even in this time of sorrow, God is there for you if you will but reach up to him for guidance. He says, that anointest my head with oil. This is important. We talked about sheep not being able to lie down by green pastures until they're, you know, free from flies and pestilence, right? And, and so this is for that anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You know, the, the, shep, the shepherd would actually make a concoction of oil and spices and sulfur. And he would make this ointment that he would pour upon the sheep's head. And it would make the flies stay off the head. You know, God sent us his spirit to anoint us and protect us from the pestilence of this earth. God loves us so much that he has poured out his spirit, his oil of his anointing upon you and I, that we don't have to face this life alone. We don't have to face this time alone. We don't have to face anything alone anymore because he is with us. And that's exactly what he's saying. Thy anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, now to, who? now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. Did you know that God is out there trying to do everything that you could even think of to help you? Another passage of Scripture says that, that God, our Father, is out there and He's devising ways to bring back His children. Man, I love that. God is up there just thinking about me. He's thinking about you. And He's finding any tool, anything He can do, anything He can use to reach down and touch you and bring you back to a place of protection. He's reaching out right now, turning you over from a cast out position and setting you upright where you can walk and you can stand and you can be all that he created you to be. 
This is our God. He anoints us with oil. Our cup is running over. We have more than we could ever think or imagine in him. Friends, I want to tell you something. When I was growing up and about to graduate, what color high? 1989. Yeah, go War Eagles, right? Okay. And about to graduate and, and plan in my life, I never planned on being at a church almost in the parking lot of the high school preaching. That was not my plans, okay? My plans were so far from that. My plans were to have a good time, to go have some fun, you know. I won't talk about some of my plans in church, okay? But y'all can imagine. Uh, maybe y'all had some of the same plans, right? But God, when he got a hold of me, began to do something miraculous in my life, and he put me in a position where he would use me to bring glory to his name, and I want nothing more than this day than for my life, my speech, my walk, the things I do to bring glory to his name. Verse 6, and we're finishing up here, says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Sheep with a good shepherd know their privileged position. Friends, I want to tell you something. I've got a good shepherd. I know my privileged position. Not that I'm better than anybody because I'm just as much a heathen as anybody else is. The only thing good in me is God in me. Did you say yes to that, babe? No, thank you. Appreciate that, honey. Okay. The only good in me is God in me. Friends, I want to tell you something. Sheep that understand their privileged position of having God Almighty as their shepherd can boast and boast proudly. We don't have to live in fear. We don't have to wonder what we're going to do next. We don't have to wonder, no, you know, what, what, what else is about to come? Because we have a God that is going to protect us no matter what. We have a God that will see us through it no matter what. We have a God that loves us and calls us friend and made a way for you and I to have relationship with him. And David knew that and Miss Jean knew that. And that's why we're here today celebrating her life. Our Lord truly cares. For us as a good shepherd. What does that mean? It means no matter what else happens, I can know that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, follow you all the days of your life. I'm going to get my wife and get Christian on up here. We're, we're getting ready to close. And in honor of Miss Jean, we're, we're going to sing her favorite song today. We're going to close the service in her favorite song. And, 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 and she, she would be upset with me if I didn't open up this altar and give everybody here a chance to make a decision. So we're going to do that today. We've done it every single service she's been in, and we'll do it again to open up this altar and give you a chance and an opportunity to make a decision. I want you to understand something right here, right now. Today... Miss Jean is dwelling in the house of the Lord. And you know how long she's going to dwell there, according to Scripture? Forever. Amen. She's going to dwell there forever. Eternity is something that we have a hard time fathoming. We can't even begin to picture it because, you know, you know I mean, I know the older I get, and I know I'm not that old uh, in regards to some folks, but others I probably am ancient, okay? But I'll tell you this. I know this for sure. Every year seems to go by a little quicker and a little quicker, and a little quicker. And I remember being really young, like Dylan's age, and thinking that 43 was ancient. <laughs> and I just feel like a young whippersnapper today, but it just feels like it's just like 16, you know. Could be because I'm a guy and we never grow up. I don't know what that is, but that's beside the point. Okay. You know, friends, life is short. Life is short. Miss Jean spent 83 years with us. It went by too fast. It went by so fast. We're not promised tomorrow. 
So make a decision today. Make a decision today that says, Lord God, I want you as my shepherd. I don't want to fear anymore. I don't want to know what's going to happen when I pass. I want to know that I know that I'm in your hands from this day forward. That whether I'm breathing on this earth or whether I check out and I get at your feet in heaven, I am with you. That's a decision that needs to be made now. Because if you put it off, it may be too late. For those of you who have already made that decision, you know who your Savior is. Then I'm going to ask you to make another decision. I'm going to ask that you choose to boast. That just as the 23rd Psalm says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Today, when this altar opens, I want you to come forward and I want you to boast that he's my shepherd. He is my Lord. He is my strength. He is my friend. He is my victory. I shall not want. I shall not be lacking. And although I may be sad and although I may be hurting and although I may be grieving at this moment, I have one who will see me through. And I want you to boast about the one that you have because he's greater than anything that ever existed, anyone that ever existed, any being that ever existed. He is God. He spoke and the world came into existence. Put your life in his hands and experience the victory of that decision. Put your hope in his hands and experience the victory of that decision. Honor Miss Jean today and know no matter what life may bring you, you can still light up the room with the presence of God that is in you. Will you stand with me as we close? Father, we give you praise, Lord. We give you praise for this day. We give you praise for this wonderful saint that you let us spend time with. Lord, she loved you. She walked out her love for you day in and day out. And we thank you for the privilege of being part of her life. And Lord, today as as decisions are made here to accept you and to declare you, I pray, Lord, that you'll comfort the family and guide them. We thank you for this, Lord. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, the altar's open. And Miss Jean, this is for you.